Everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be about the most disappointing books that I've read in 2020. This is just a continuation of my end of the year series. Don't forget to subscribe because we're not done. I will be talking about the best, most surprising, most disappointing, and worst books that I've read in 2020. Everything will be linked down below as soon as it's up. But yes, today, the disappointments. Uh, some books I still gave over three stars, actually, but I just thought I was going to love and I didn't. Some of them were just... Ugh, really terrible, but my expectations weren't super high and just not quite enough to make it to my worst. I still have about like seven books to talk about, so let's do this. Let's start strong. Let's start strong. The Girl in the Stars by Mark Lawrence. I thought I was going to give this book five stars. I'm giving it two stars. <laughs> So you can imagine how disappointing this was. I absolutely adored the Ancestor trilogy by him, the first book being Red Sister. I give it five stars. Uh, it was the same universe. This is a companion series. And I do think you need to read it. Don't let anyone tell you you don't, you do. It was like a apocalyptic world. There's like magic, magical school setting, which I love, uh, badass fighting nuns. It was everything I want in a series. And this was not it. You're following a character who is part of one of the ice tribes in the north. And I was happy that we were going to get more information about this. I'm going to keep this spoiler free, so I'm going to have to be a little vague because the only spoiler I could mention would just leave you with nothing to enjoy. Um, something happens and she has to try and survive. That's the whole book. Unfortunately, this read like a YA. Like, I don't know if anyone else <laughs> agrees, but um, this is supposed to be adult and it's 100% a YA, like 100%. All my issues with YA basically are in here. Um, you know, main character is special. And then boys are all over her instantly after meeting her five seconds ago. And I, so something happens in the beginning, you know, it looks like it's potentially going to be good. And then everything else was so boring. I was so bored throughout the whole book. It's not a big book. It's like 350 pages and it's written big, quite frankly. Um, even though it's like an action based book, I feel like nothing really happened kind of thing. Um, you don't get any answers to the questions that were left unanswered from the first series. It looks like it, you might get them later on, but at this point, I don't care anymore. Like, I, I don't want to invest more time and money and energy into this. So I'm not going to be continuing. And yeah, overall, just super, super disappointed by this book. Uh, again, I really thought I was going to give this five stars, but no, I, I don't recommend it. I just don't. The next book I wanted to talk about is Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. I have such a weird relationship with this author. I feel like every book I've read by him has gotten a different rating. <laughs> like, every single one of them. And this was a disappointment. Actually, even more so because the beginning was good. So much potential, which left me so frustrated by the end because the twist was obvious and just the last part was just so not good. But let's start with the good stuff, the beginning. The main character is a bookseller who a few years ago wrote a blog post about Eight Perfect Murders and he listed a couple books, basically book recommendations. <laughs> and uh, he finds himself in the middle of a FBI investigation because a killer decided to recreate the murders he's talking about. So is he a suspect? Is he going to just help the police trying to, you know, figure it out? Um, keep it in vague, obviously. The beginning is great because, again, great idea. It feels very cozy, you know, bookstore, we all love books, and it's actually during the winter, so like perfect timing again right now to read it. But as the story went on, I just found myself expecting some of the stuff, the twist would happen, I would just be like, okay, that's what happened. Like I was not invested into it anymore. Like the, the first half, great. Second half, horrible. And I don't know if it's going to be a series. It looks like it on Goodreads, hopefully not. Um, but yeah, I just, I have no strong emotions toward what happens at the end. So don't recommend it, did not care for it. If you wanna read something by the author, I would recommend Kind Worth Killing, which is the first book, unfortunately, that I've read by him, which I think is his best one. So do yourself a non favor, do it too. <laughs> the next one hurts, it straight up hurts. Leviathan Wakes. I thought that once again, I was going to give this book five stars. I was so excited to read this. This is an adult sci-fi series and Everyone raves about it, talks about the TV show, the series. I have book one and then I have book three and four on my shelves because I buy most of my books used. I haven't found book two yet, but I was super excited. Um, I struggled. I really struggled to read it. I had to go back and forth with the audiobook because I find it easier to torture myself as I'm, you know, getting ready in the morning or 
on ready at night listening to the book than like sitting down and reading it when I'm not feeling it. But I couldn't pinpoint what was annoying me about this book. Um, but some people were saying that it feels a lot like cop conversations, which I, maybe. Um, plus, you might notice, what is that that boosted, Emily? Well, since you ask, I was listening to it, getting ready. It was applying my makeup. And I had to press pause on the audiobook to go and find this quote because this is straight up horrible. Straight up horrible. Are you ready? The moon itself, Phoebe, filled the frame, turning slowly to show all sides like a prostitute at a cheap brothel. This is how you know this was written by a man. <laughs> like, seriously? I think the best part, though, is that I have some dudes trying to explain this quote to me on Goodreads, which, dude, no. No, there's no reason. They're just looking at the moon on the screen, turning. Like, that was so unnecessary. That's just one of the quotes. Um, but unfortunately, the story just didn't appeal to me. I just couldn't connect to the characters. Um, when things would happen, I would just acknowledge, okay, this just happened. And it's super action-packed, but I just could not care whatsoever. Uh, I have been told that it gets better and that the TV show is much better too. I will most likely continue the series eventually. Like I said, I don't have book two, but my library does, so I might just continue that way. Um, one day when I'm desperate <laughs> or uh, try a TV show because a lot of people are saying that some of the best characters that are later in a book series appear earlier so it might be easier to uh, you know care um, so yeah I don't know I just you know when you finally read a book that you thought for years that you were going to love and then you really don't that's yeah that's that's why it's here in this video just really disappointed by this so yeah um it is what it is. I've since moved on. I read this in February, March, so I'm not as mad as I used to be, but yeah, I, I thought I was going to love you. <sighs> Children Bruin by Adrienne Tchaikovsky. Um, I hesitated. I'm not 100% sure it should be in this video, but I still, I need to talk about it because Children of Time made it to my best, the first book in this series. Um, the first book made it to my best of whatever year I read it in, and I have been looking forward to reading this for way too long and it took me a while to get around to reading it because part of me was scared I wasn't going to love it. In the first book you're following uh, the remnant of humanity fighting against giant intelligent spiders for a planet. That's that's all I'm going to say. And then this is the second book and I don't want to like spoil the first book because it's amazing. So unique that ending though. And this is kind of like after. So the remnant of that um, end up fighting bigger, badder aliens kind of thing. Um, they're octopuses this time. And um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Okay. To be fair, some bits of this were super interesting. Like when uh, some humans that aren't related to the first planet make it to a planet, that was interesting. When you see uh, basically human, a human creating these octopuses um that was super interesting but a lot of it was just kind of eh and uh it is left very open towards the end so i believe it's going to be continued in a trilogy which it feels like is it going to be again bigger better aliens like i don't know i'm so torn because i thought again i was going to love this and some parts are super interesting but i still found myself bored at times and it's a big book and i just i don't know the concepts are smart, brilliant, interesting, but ugh. this one I did it to myself. Um, Mallory by Josh Mellerman. This is the second book after Bird Box, which everyone knows the movie. Um, I was part of the unpopular opinion crowd. Um, I thought that the movie was well done because I had read the book and I feel like the movie was better than the book. So I went into this one, you know, excited but a little wary. Um, still disappointed. <laughs> It wasn't quite the worst book. That's why it's in this video. It could have been in the other one, quite frankly. Um, but in this one, you're following Mallory and the two or two kids basically as teenagers. They're basically like coming of age and things happen, which I'm going to keep it vague. But you learn a bit more, I guess, about the phenomenon of, you know, you can't look outside because you're going to kill yourself and kill people kind of thing. So they're still walking around with blindfolds and uh, things happen. I read it. And I just felt like that was not necessary. I didn't learn really anything that was worth it. The twist at the end was not worth it. Um, the story was just kind of boring. 
and just not interesting whatsoever. It did make it to a video I've done part of the uh, standalone series. This was part of the uh, series that should have been standalones. So that kind of tells you about my opinion. Um, but yeah, don't recommend it, skip it, honestly. Okay, another book that I hesitated about including it here, uh, a little bit like Children of Ruin, which I gave like three stars to, I still give it three, 3.5, I don't know. Um, a Beautifully Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green. I read the first book, loved it, and made it to my most surprising read of the year I read it in. So whenever this book was announced, I was kind of, oh, I thought the other one was a standalone. I'm gonna keep it vague once again because it is the second book. But in the first one, it's kind of a contact with aliens, first contact with aliens, but uh, it's very accessible. And the main character isn't meant to be likable, by the way. I feel like the only complaint basically I've heard is that she's not likable and it's like, yes, she's not supposed to be. Um, in this one, you're following other characters, mostly. So that was different, um, but I don't know. I just couldn't really find myself caring. I do think that whatever happens at the end is interesting. I just didn't care that much throughout the whole book. Like stuff happens and I just felt really, felt really, really detached from it. And I, yeah, I would love to hear anyone else's opinion because I read it and I feel like it's very forgettable. There you go. So except for that thing that happens at the end, which I find very relevant right now. Um, everything else was just meh. So I thought I would just give it a little shout out in here. It wasn't bad, just disappointing after loving the first one so much. Um, quickly, because I don't have that much to say about them, I have some classics to talk about because early this year I read a few. I was doing a challenge where I was reading a whole shelf every week not a whole one. The books I could read that week were solely from uh, one shelf at a time, which my books are mostly uh, divided by genre. So I ended up on classics and I read the first one was F Frankenstein, which I I feel like, you know, I know what it is about, but I've never read the book. And it was, the writing is beautiful. It is. Uh, I do think that audiobook is not a bad way of going through that one, but I just didn't really care and I was really, really bored and I, I, no, I have nothing else to say. I was just very disappointed because this was boring to me. There's no need for me to specify, but yes, this is my opinion. My opinion is not objective, neither is yours. So uh, yeah, this was a lot down for me. I want to throw it out very, very quickly. Weathering Heights. I do want to say this is on me um, or the hype. There's just so much hype behind this book. Everyone talks about it. And um, I've heard too many times that this is a romance, which it's not. It's really, really not. Like, I worry about you guys because this, no. Um, this is a revenge story about two horrible people. <laughs> this is not love. Um, it was very, very messed up. I don't recommend it as an audiobook, by the way. I do think it's too confusing for that. Uh, but the writing was beautiful. The story is interesting. Um, it's definitely more slow paced because classic. Um, very, very atmospheric, I'll give it that. But I think that because I went into it with these kind of expectations, I was just weirded out. So I didn't really enjoy it that much. And last but not least, also very quickly, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, which I thought I was going to love this. I really thought so because I had seen the movie uh, My Cousin Rachel by her and uh, based on her book, I should say. And I was mad actually when I realized that it was a book because I wish I had read it before. I still will read it because it was brilliant. Um, so I went into that one very excited and eh. The first half was very, very slow and I don't really think that the payoff by the end was worth it. Uh, also very atmospheric kind of book. Uh, I believe this is still gothic and I don't know. I just thought I was going to love it because it's been you know, mentioned everywhere as a classic that is a must read and I kind of just have meh feelings over it. So not a horrible book, just a little disappointed because I thought I was going to love it. This is it. These are the most disappointing books that I've read in 2020. Please let me in the comment section the ones you were disappointed by and if you have any opinions about the ones I have read and didn't care for, uh, thumbs up once again, subscribe because the rest of the series is still coming. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye.